Okay, hi everyone. I wanted to do this interview or chat on here for so long. I'm with my friend Will. Say hi, Will. Hello, everybody. <laughs> he is a twin flame friend, initially a client, but we became fast friends and speaking with him has been so intriguing and so eye-opening for me on this whole journey. He's really helped to shed light on what it is to be the masculine runner in this dynamic. Um, we have some great discussions. We have some crazy debates. Sometimes I want to strangle him just like I want to strangle my own twin. <laughs> but I really have been dying to do this interview and it just wasn't happening for so long. And I would have to think that maybe it's been meant to be. It's divine timing. Maybe he had to go a little further in the process, and I did too, so that we could discuss it today with some more insights on it. But welcome, Will. I'm so glad you're my first sort of interview on here. Thank you for um, inviting me into your channel, and I appreciate all the advice you have given me over the time, and I do appreciate our debates, because <laughs> likewise, I sometimes think you're thinking is one-sided a little bit so it's good to have mm -hmm. a, a smart and educated debate yes definitely definitely so I find with Will and I find that probably with many masculine you know quote-unquote runners the energy it might cause them to just want to pull away from this or not believe in this and then Will has his sort of side of the coin of how he feels about that or just being more logical about this and realistic so we'll get into that but first Will I'd love it if you could just sort of share a rundown of you know just how did you come into this twin flame journey how long have you been at it how did you just sort of you know, how did you come to contact me that day or even look up the video? I think you found my video for what to do when you're married and you meet your twin flame or something like that, right? What brought you to that? Well, yeah, it was, was, we'll just go from what, what brought me to, to you because uh, all those questions are for a, a really long, actually, discussion. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, I was... Um, struggling with my, my wife, like, I, I was like, you know, I really love my wife and I'm like, man, I can't get this girl out of my head. And I was just like, really like upset. So I started Googling soulmates and I was just trying to wonder, like, is this girl that I met my soulmate? I was like my real soulmate. So I started Googling that. And then I came across the twin flames on YouTube. So I started watching these videos of all these people talking about that. And I kind of, you know, it made sense and I was listening and then. I was like, huh, I wonder if like ayahuasca would help me because I heard a lot about ayahuasca. So I put twin flame ayahuasca oh, and then your channel popped up. <laughs> yeah. So then okay. I started listening to you talk and I started like really connecting to what you're saying. So that made me reach out to you. And then we talked for a while. Then here we are now. Like I know I didn't answer every question you asked just now, but no, like, that was that's, that's okay. a real small rundown. Yeah, that's okay. We just want sort of a brief rundown. So basically, Will's married. He's actually in a very happy marriage. He is very in love with his wife. But he met a girl that has just sparked something in him. There's a, an age gap. She's a lot younger than you. Um, yes. That's common from what I've told him from many, many twin flames that are going through this journey. Um, and there's just all these sort of barrier barriers in a way um but often often will will come to me and you know I find that one minute and so many of my listeners especially feminine will understand this there's times when I've talked to you and you've just blocked your twin flame or you're not speaking to her right now you're not speaking to her and it's been so interesting for me to hear from you your mindset of where you're at when you make these decisions and how strong you feel about it. And then later you'll come back to me and you're just, you're feeling that longing for her. Can you explain a little bit about, you know, just what it's been like along this process for you and, you know, your inner struggle that you're feeling? 
we'll just go with the the struggle because mm-hmm. uh, many times I have told we have we had these talks like okay, <clears throat> you know we got to quit talking it's not right, and I'd always tell her like you got to move on from me you can do better I can give you my all you deserve a man that <clears throat> excuse me you deserve a man that can give you everything you deserve and i can't give you all my time i can't give you all my attention and and then she like we'd have like these like horrible crying matches like we were just like we always called it an emotional roller coaster she would call it an emotional smoothie it was just so (laughs) sad so then we would disconnect like i would cut it off and then usually she would write me email me and then i'd come running back and then we'd go through that for a while yeah the push now good yeah Push pull, we call it like coming together, pulling apart, coming together, pulling apart. Right, and then eventually I would be like, I need to distance myself from you, and she'd be like, okay, and it'd be still the same crying, but then it would be me reaching out. And the last time it was, I'll just reuse the lot, the most recent. It was um, in the summer of this year. We um, decided we need to quit talking again, mm-hmm. and one day I was just, um, I was just trying to relax. I was smoking smoking some weed outside and all of a sudden I just broke down in tears or crying. And I was really, 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 really thinking of her hard. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to call her tomorrow. And I waited and I waited in the morning before I went to the gym and I called her and she answered on the first ring. And she was just like, wow, you know, I'm so glad you called me. I was thinking about you like crazy. And I was just like, yeah, me too. Yeah. We got talking and then back at it again, going hanging out, you know, and then all of a sudden like, and then October 21st is when I was like, all right, we got to quit talking again. And she was just like, she just gave me the speeches of, you know, like, like what we have is real. I don't know why you keep on running away. And I was just like, what I told her, the last thing I told her was, you know, like once you find somebody else and you really fall in love, you're going to look at this love that we had as shit. I was like, you just will. And she goes, no, I won't. I trust me. And I was like, okay, so it's been since October 21st, last time we talked, but see with us, it's usually about a month. We oh. go on and off for a month. So whereas with me and my twin, it's like months and months and months as we've discussed. And I've discussed with you that my twin will also, you know, he will tell me, Oh, you'll find someone better than me. And, you know, I've told you about that, that we've noticed um, through speaking that you know things that my twin will say to me are the same things that your twin will say to you or things the way I'll express myself you find it very very similar to how your twin expresses herself to you right correct and where we always get in these debates and I'll bring it up now is yeah what I look at I'll say I'll, just for me I'm not, I'm not gonna use anybody else I look at yeah. it as a, addiction Cause that's kind of like what it feels like, you know, it's like, um, you quit, like, I'll just use a simple alcoholic, like, you know, and you quit, like you quit drinking, you fiend for it. Then you have your drink and then you're back on the wagon drinking again. Then you got to go through your AA steps, your processes all over again. I never fully, uh, took a real like long break from it. So, you know, of course I'm still like withdrawing. That's mm-hmm. always felt like, I felt like I was always withdrawing. Like, uh, I, um, never understood. I, I never had like, Thank, thankfully i've never had any real addiction to anything mm-hmm. and then this is like my first real addiction where i felt like i was re- like i was addicted the way i felt like it was really really crazy like it changed me like completely i'm a whole different person because this whole mm-hmm. journey so that's where we we start and this is funny because this is just a recent debate we've had it a bit in the past but i'm trying to tell will you know my twin he's pushed me away for a year you know, we didn't text or anything for eight months and we didn't speak for a year. My twin found a new woman in his life. My twin did stick to his guns to clear the quote unquote addiction or, you know, this obsession or, you know, this thing that my twin and I feel the masculine wants to control my twin was able to go a long haul without having any communication with me. And still, all those months later, he still came to me like, oh, I think about you every single day. I get tons of, you know, reminders of you, which I know you get as well, Will, like, you know, the songs on the radio or things in movies or just things that pop up that are these 
constant reminders. My twin told me when I spoke to him, yes, I get those so much and it, it pisses me off sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, stop, you know? And so my thing, if you will, that I'm saying from the feminine's end is I feel like the masculine want to see this as like, no, this is just silly. This is just, it's psychological. It's all in my head. I'm just lusting for this person. It's not realistic. I, it's never going to work out. I need to move on with my life. I need to let them go. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. Just, I just need to stop talking to them. Then it'll go away. So I feel like on the masculine and that's the, the running aspect of it is trying to control this. So when your twin reaches out to you, you also would write him a bunch. Then he'd eventually cave and write you, right? Um, the last time I wrote him in that year, I wrote him twice. The first one was just very friendly. Like, hey, I have a boyfriend as well. I would love to just still be your friend if you want to. He didn't respond. Then the next one later on, it was it was like, oh, it was me just like, oh, I still think about you every day. I have dreams about you, da, 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 da. Here's what's been going on in my life, you know. And again, just no expectation, but just very neutral. He didn't write me back for like two or three weeks. I forget. It was quite a long time. I didn't think he was going to write back. And then he finally, he waited to write back until he was in a fight with his girlfriend. And they they told each other they broke up, but he knew they'd be getting back together. They've done it before. So that's what it took. I didn't keep chasing a lot during that year. I'm just trying to express that. So... But do you think he would have wrote you if you never wrote him at all? Like, say you just didn't write zero, zero, nothing. Do you think he would have wrote you? Mm, Probably not. But it doesn't mean that I still don't think he would have been thinking about me a lot. Or, you know what I mean? Feeling the connection. Feeling like that, that telepathic communication. Just where you feel their energy around you. Or... You just feel, you just feel them. You feel them, you know? Right. Well, the reason I'm asking these questions is I'm just, like I said, again, I'm comparing this to addiction. Like um, there's people who's been sober for eight years and then have one drink and they're right back, you know, to the same problems. And then they had to go again, the same processes of cleaning up their sobriety. Mm hmm. So sometimes with you, though, Will, like sometimes you will say, no, I just need to stop this. This is silly. Um, We just need to stop looking at twin flame stuff and just I need you'll say yourself, I need to focus on my wife. I need you will sound like you're you have a game plan, you know, like (laughs) I'm in control of this. I'm going to kick this habit. It's not good for me. You used to always say it's not good for my mental health. (laughs) Exactly. And even you and I, we've, you know, not talked for a while. And then explain to me, though, why, why on your end, you suddenly like, oh, God, here it goes again. Do you just think it's just simply the addiction? Or do you think it's the, the soul connection there? <sighs> That's a good question. Because like, I, um, I would get these waves, I feel like I just call them waves, because I don't know how mm-hmm. to really explain it. I would just hit me so hard. And I would just like be really upset. Like I, I was just like start thinking really, really hard. But again, like, you know, that's if I just learn how to control my own pattern of thinking a little, I mean, I just from what I'm like trying to gather, like to myself, like my own self, like um, when I want, like, I just if I can learn how to change my psychology a little bit, maybe I can be better mm-hmm. around this time. So. Um, See, this is what I find is so interesting, because on my end, this is why, and from hearing you talking to me about this, from seeing you, you know, waver back and forth between, oh my God, like, I know this connection is real, Talisha, I know I feel it, I know deep down in there she's the one, but yet, you know you have these layers of blockages of like why this is just silly this just can't be and to me very 3d reasons like age differences or financial reasons or whatever that make you think I just should not be with this person I have to block it away it's not good for me and for me this is what I see is I see it as the feminine side needs to surrender this relationship to the universe in a way of saying 
okay, I let go. I'm not going to keep pulling at this person. Just like your twin right now, she's gone the longest that she's ever gone without contacting you. I also kept going longer and longer and longer, not contacting my twin, like in a year's period twice, you know, or eight months, I should say twice. So you go these longer and longer periods of time. And in that way, the feminine side is surrendering in that we say, okay, I give it up to the universe. Maybe we're going to work out. Maybe we're not. Maybe we'll come together in physical union. Maybe we won't. But then what I'm seeing through you is that on the masculine side, first of all, I did not know that you guys struggle as much as you do if you're a representation of that, because you sometimes sound like you're going through complete hell, like just sort of being pulled from two ends. And I see it as between your heart and your mind, you know, and then to to feel that the surrender on the masculine end is to give into it to give into the spiritual connection and believe it is really a true connection what do you think about that or like you know what I mean can you see the other end that I talk about that okay well then on the other side what if this is really this spiritual connection and you're going through an awakening process and you're being drawn to this other soul for a reason Yes, I um I totally agree with that. I do. I'm not going to say like what you just said is wrong because a big part of me is like, yeah, I do feel like she is the one, but mm-hmm. I'm like, is it just like is it is she the one because we only hang out on we'll say out of the week. We were hanging out one or two times a week and every time we hung out, it's fun because We're not paying bills together. We don't have responsibilities together. So every time we're hanging out, it's this vacation mode. And we're always like having so much fun together. That's, Mm -hmm. that's where I struggle a lot. Cause I'm like, "Uh, am I just, am I, is all this bliss just because we don't have any responsibilities together, but I will 100% agree with you when, um, Meeting her definitely woke up my spirit and it has changed me so much for to be a better person. That Mm -hmm. hands down is correct. Like, um, yeah, that hands down 100%. Ah, Yeah, I won't disagree with that. No, exactly. I really see you coming into your awakening process just in general. That's for sure. And I also really struggle with it because you said it in the beginning. Um, my wife is a wonderful, wonderful person. And mm-hmm. that's in the very, very beginning of meeting her. Like, that's what rocked me because I was just like, whoa, what am I doing? Because um, just so everyone knows, my wife and I are in an open marriage. And when I met this girl, it literally it was like in three days, I felt like I knew her my whole life. And I went through all like, you know, it's all this stuff. And it just, it was insane. So, um, but yeah. I, again, it did wake up my spirit a lot, a lot, lot. Like I just, I feel like a new person. And sometimes I wish I can go back to my old self, not because my old self, not because I like, I like who I am, but my old self was just way, it was just easier. I, you know what I mean? I was just yeah. more carefree. I didn't, I didn't think like about this girl, all the, like all the, it just doesn't run, run my thoughts. Yes. Yeah. And can you explain to me, because, okay, first of all, sometimes you talk to me and I think you will just think it's badly affected your mental health, or maybe you're going through a slight depression period, especially before, you know, where you would just start crying sometimes and stuff. And I would explain to you that that's what happens to tons of, you know, all the twin flames I speak to, like the purging and all that. What's the process, you know, what's the process been like for you in the nutshell? Um, process for for what like uh, like my awakening or yeah or you know what I believe is the twin flame journey or you know whatever you want to call it an awakening and just finding this person and them triggering stuff in you she like through my process um I always like I feel like um she just helped me be my more authentic self mm-hmm. like um the she was like meeting her made me more genuine and uh, I was able to like just be myself more around people. Like um, I'm always so worried about everybody else. I always try to adapt to their personalities and kind of just make everybody feel safe and comfortable. And 
and uh, she was <laughs> dead on. Like, I, I, that's why, you know, like before I, I really started getting into the Twin Flame stuff, because I'm so like skeptic of everything. I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes I think I, at first, like looking at it, I'm like, these are probably just a bunch of granola eating hippies. So I'm like, <laughs> the, the, but then looking at all the signs and they're saying like, it's your mere self. I'm like, it really is. Like, I really, I looking in her eyes, I really felt like I was looking at myself and her personality was spot on like mine. So then I didn't have to be anybody else. Like I was actually just myself around her. And she said the same thing. Like, Oh, I can never be myself, but around you, I can be myself. And then just little, yeah. little things like that was like, the major like like oh my god this person's fucking awesome and when like what were the signs other than that were there other sort of signs that you saw in mind that do make you believe okay this is definitely my twin flame um the biggest one for me the definitely the biggest one for me was being able to talk uh like telepathically Mm -hmm. that was the huge one because not just one time out out of luck at least a dozen times like when we first like were going through this and um, this was before I knew Twin Flames existed. Yes. I would be. You've been at this for two years, right? Uh, two and a half. Okay. Yes. So I would just be like kind of upset, maybe tearing up a little bit in my bed and just kind of like laying on the side thinking about her. And this, like I said, this scenario has happened a lot. I'd grab my cell phone and I'd be like, I really wish you would just call me or talk to me because I really, really need to talk to you. I'm really sad. Seconds later, my phone would ring. Seconds later, my phone would get a text message. There she was. And I'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> so then yeah. I would be like, she like, she would write, hey, you up? And I'd be like, yeah, I've been thinking about you so hard. Oh, my God, me too. And then uh, like, that happened so many times. I'm like, oh, my Aww. God. And then there'd be times where we, I, I, I feel like I'm talking to her. And... Um, I'm like talking to her, like right, like, and then we have conversations because in my mind I'm talking to her. We get like, together, and then we'd get together, and we would say the same thing at the same time all the time. Like, oh my god, like that's one thing. And then she would say the same thing. Like, she, like, you know, my times I talk to you, like, like without talking to you, and I'm like, oh my god, me too. Aww. And <laughs> this is, and then, and then this is the one that really, really like blew my mind. Wow. We did yoga together one we, we would do yoga a couple of times. And then one time we went to a yoga class that was meditating and very spiritual. Mm-hmm. And we were laying there in class and everyone was, you know, doing their thing. The instructor was instructing us to breathe and all that stuff. And I reached over and grabbed her hand and we were holding hands during it. And I, during it, I'm like, wow, our souls are talking to each other. This is crazy. Like I had all those warm feelings in me and okay, I was just keeping this to myself. And then, class was over we got out of class and i looked at her i said you know what i felt she goes our souls were talking i was like yes oh my god she's like i felt that too and i'm like that stuff that's the stuff oh. where i'm like okay this, this is, is like this spooky. is crazy <laughs> <laughs> a little bit spooky a little bit different something strange is going on here right right but then so then I'm like, all right, there has to be, and then that, this is before I said, this is this stuff, all this stuff I just explained was way mm-hmm. before I knew about Twin Flames. Yes, you just knew there's something here. And that's how all of us Twin Flames, like we just find each other. We find our, you know, through YouTube or the information seems to come through when the time is right. Because I think I was at it for about a year almost with mine or eight months, something like that. Wow, that's interesting. I just thought about that eight months twice there (laughs) but yeah it was about eight months before I found out about even the word or concept twin flame and it came at the perfect time because again much like myself I thought I was going crazy I thought I was obsessed what was wrong with me I've never been like this with someone before this was so weird um my friends thought I was going crazy I went to a psychologist I went to marriage counseling with my husband to try to salvage the marriage I just thought I was going nuts. I thought there was seriously something wrong with me. <laughs> and I everything couldn't... you just said, um, same here. I thought I was going nuts. I went to a psychologist. Every, same thing. Yeah. Same exact thing. I think when we first started speaking, you were talking to the psychologist. And I remember you would tell me, my psychologist said this, this, and that. And I remember I would tell you, Will, a psychologist, they cannot understand a twin flame dynamic. And that's where I'm at is... 
that's why I help other people in, in sessions is because I just don't feel that unless you've been through this, you cannot understand it. You cannot fathom what that person is going through because it's out of this world. And I think with you, even still, I, I believe that as a masculine energy, sometimes exactly you want to just think, oh, this is just craziness. Um, you know, maybe I'm just, you've said to me many times, maybe we're just crazy. Or Talisha, have you ever thought, <laughs> this was interesting because recently before I spoke to my twin flame and I hadn't talked to him in so long, I remember you would say to me, Talisha, do you ever just think you're crazy? What if your twin flame is just over you right now? What if he, you know, what if he's just doing just fine? And I would tell you, I, it could be, but I don't know why Will deep in my soul, I believe that he's not over it. I believe he thinks about me. I believe he feels me just like I feel him. And sure enough, when I spoke to him, um, you know, and I shared a lot of the stuff with you and I think you were sort of blown away because you were like, oh my goodness, he sounds exactly like me. Like my twin said to me, Talisha, like just recently, it was like, Talisha, you've made my life great, but you've also made it so unbearable. <laughs> yes. But again, um, as human beings, you want to be connected to somebody. You, um, you, you just, uh, connection's huge. I, you know, that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, you know, like, and then it's just, you get kind of attached and like for me, um, I never really give it a real shot to get over it because we talk every month I mean, we'll go on breaks talk for a month i mean that that's kind of like oh, i never really like even like um it's like withdrawing so like when you withdraw if you go back to your substance you're gonna go back to square one i never yeah. really i never had a chance to withdraw and then come out like stronger or, we, or, oh, or once you're, like, or, okay, well fine then just don't talk to her ever again and just you know totally live happily ever after with your wife or do what you got to do and then you'd contact me like, oh, God, like, oh, she's still on my <laughs> mind or like, ah, like maybe you are right, Talisha, kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong here, but it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, I feel that the masculine, like my twin, he said, I didn't think you'd ever still be around waiting for me. You know what I mean? Like, I thought right. you'd have gone by now. And I'm sure my twin also thought. If I just get this relationship, if I just get things moving forward in my life um, with this girlfriend and I just ignore it and I'm going to move on. This is just silly. This is crazy. I just need to leave her in the past. It makes no sense for us to be together. She lives far, you know, like, like 3D wise, it does not make good sense for us to be together. You know, I have a child. He has a child. We live, you know, I'm in Canada. He's over in the UK, like it does not make good sense. Whereas I'm like, hey, I'm willing to do what it takes. But he's just like, no, 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 no. And, you know, so many fears and it couldn't work out or, you know, just so many fears layered upon fears of why it can't work out. Mm -hmm. And I see that as a common thread. And when I pull cards for a lot of my my clients like I'll just see these energies and I saw these energies for so mm -hmm. long and to finally start speaking with you and have you kind of put a voice to what I was picking up was just mind blowing. And then we, you, um, like the blocks or the things that you said were blocks or because to me, cause here I'll tell everybody when I met her, I was 33 and she was 18. So, and she's like telling me how much she loves me and all this stuff we're going, and she's like, we're talking and then like hit myself. I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, when I was 18 years old, I didn't know what the hell I wanted. I was like, I was, then I, I would tell her that. I'm like, you're 18. I was like, you, you don't, you don't really understand. Like your first love is like, it's, it's not, you know, you, you're going to like move on. Like, yeah. And she'd be like, I know what I want. I'm like, come on. I'm like, and then she'd be like, I'm never going to find anybody else. I'm like, you're, are you, no, no, I'd go crazy. I'm like, come on. I'm like, <laughs> you're, you're nuts. Like you're, you're so young. I was like, you're going to, you're going to fall in love in and out maybe two or three more times, hopefully not that, like maybe five, six, I don't know, hopefully not that many, I, whatever I said. Yeah. And then two years later, I remember like before we really quit talking in the summer, she called me and was like, I'm still not over it. I'm still here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so my, but you know, so I got, I put, I put that in perspective as well because who really knows herself at 18? Like now she just turned 21 like just turned 21 
who knows their self then like for real like you know a little bit about yourself but you really aren't yourself like you know it takes years like really come into who you are she's 21 now right yes yeah because we've discussed that because will will say to me you know she's like she's so young and she can't be ready for this and that and the other and i'm like will i was engaged at 21 i got married um at 22 i was fully like an amazing wife i was just so settled i was so ready for all of that and I know that on the surface, like, it seems so, um, uh, it doesn't seem like it could be that way, but I just sort of put this voice to the other side of things, well, and you'll even say, you know, she probably wants to go to bars and, and do this and that, and I'm like, well, I, I hated bars at 21, like, I was over it very quick, like, you know, I, you can't assume for sure, you know what I mean, but You're at right. the Time, I will say that you know I do understand your and even my twin and all the masculine twins thought process of you know the blockages and I do believe that they're there for a reason and sometimes you'll say to me you know I just feel that she has grow growing to do and recently you've even really opened up that you know your own spiritual growth that you need to go through and in that way I do understand separation and it it's it's good to understand in a way that we all have to make peace with it um you know I'm going to have another guest on soon to talk to and she was the runner and now the you know the tables have turned and she she's finally ready and now he's sort of you know softly running I would say so I'll we'll share her story as well so it's really making me realize that there's a bigger picture here. There's divine timing. I know you seem like sometimes you feel under a lot of pressure or you're putting yourself under pressure. Um, but you're, you seem like you're in a good place right now where you just, you seem like you just want to take care of yourself. Yes. Talk about that a little bit, you know, and just your process to finding yourself love, self-care, um, even spiritual awakening and the work you're doing yes i um recently realized that i only want to be around people like for me like i like to work out a lot so i only want to be around people who want to go work out or like hike or yoga and eat clean and i um i told talisha recently that i'm gonna go sober i'm not i, ba- I rarely drink as it is but i do smoke a lot of weed and i haven't smoked this whole month and I'm going to keep that up for a while and just be totally, totally uh, just free and just like let my, cause I, I started doing micro doses of acid too when I was mm-hmm. feeling like just, and I, was, I realized I was doing the micro dosing and the smoking to relieve some pain and that's yeah. not what that's about. So I want to, <laughs> so if I'm going to have, have some pain, I want to just deal with it like substance free. Yeah. And I want to just, I want to come like, I want to face it head on. I don't want to mask it anymore. I just want to. Yeah fix myself and i recently just signed up to do ayahuasca in december which is so exciting because i we've talked a lot about it and i i totally forgot that that was the main the initial reason why you found my video i totally forgot about that but exactly it was such a key to my major awakening process like it just catapulted my awakening and i don't think it's for everybody i don't you know tell people to do it but no, definitely if, not if it's got to call feel- you Exactly. If you feel that calling, it is just, to me, nothing can compare. And they'll say it's like going through 10 years of therapy in one night. And Yeah, I've heard some people even say it's like 30 years. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's like a lifetime of, you know, it's not the end all be all going to cure everything, but it's really just it's it wakes you up. It kind of kicks your ass and wakes you up. And it's so it's been interesting because quite a few twin flames that I speak to it, they just, it ended up in their path. And to me, it just sort of goes hand in hand with the awakening process for certain people. And, you've been, um, you've been yeah, doing that. I'll go ahead, finish. Yeah. So you've been doing that. You've been, yeah, you want to sort of have a clean month, which is really cute because when I last spoke to my twin, he was saying he just wants to, you know, yeah, just sort of, 
drop any addictions or be clean. He had been looking into ayahuasca, which before I felt he used to sort of look at me like, oh, why are you doing this stuff? Or <laughs> he seemed intrigued, but yet like, oh God, I would never do that. Um, whereas the last time I talked to him, it was so cute. He was like, I have the calling, Talisha. <laughs> And he had been researching and watching videos and researching, you know, where he wanted to do it. And if he's going to do it, that's up to him and in his own time. And um, it was it was so interesting, though, that that you and him, you know, around the same time were seeming very drawn to it. That's that is interesting. And there's also two other bullet points I wanted to make. Yeah. Um. One was, remember, we've had a big discussion on this, I don't know if you remember, but I said there's 7 billion people on this planet, and you really don't believe that you couldn't connect to one other, or maybe three or five other souls like you have your twin. Because I truly believe you could, you just, like, haven't met everybody out there yet. But are you meant to meet everybody out there? No, of course not. It's <laughs> impo- it's, that, that'd be close to impossible. But, I mean... I feel like there has to be other people you would feel that same way about. I mean, you can't. I believe we have various soul connections out there. I do believe that some people have met, you know, what would be called a catalyst or a false twin flame for sure. Um, as we've discussed, I believe there are many people out there that think they are twin flames and they aren't. And it could just be an excuse for an unhealthy obsession or it could be, um, I, you know, I've discussed with you, there's people that I feel are just, you know, spiritual people, they know terminologies, they know about this. So they sort of just want to say, oh, I'm, I'm a twin flame as well. In my experience, it's been five years, I've never met anyone remotely close to what I felt in like the first second, I laid eyes on my twin and met him. Um, I believe that the events to bring us together, this is a guy that is from across the world. You know what I mean? He was much younger than me as well. The events to bring us together had to be so synchronistic for that day and time and place to happen. If I meant to meet someone else, they would have, I feel, or will be divinely brought in. It's part of my plan that laid out for me I've been open to that for the past five years I've been open to okay universe like please like almost like begging like please send someone else my way this guy is running from me please let me get over him please let me move on please let me sever this connection and I feel like that's sort of my argument to you is like good luck trying yes but again I will then I would tell you how can you kick that if you're talking to people about it nonstop. You're on this, you're making these channels and you know what I mean? You're always mm-hmm. talking about it. So when you're constantly thinking about it, how can you ever give yourself that opportunity to get over it? Well, what I found interesting, and that's what I said back to you was that to speak to my twin who it's not like he has twin flame friends or, you know, does sessions with people or even watched YouTube videos on it or, knew much even about spirituality or any of the sort he from what I picked up from our just dis- like very long long discussion is he does struggle with it even on his end without being exposed to any of that so yes he can probably maybe he can push it away better but from what I gathered from him he said he feels pain all the time from it. He thinks about me every day. So that's my argument to that is like, he's not exposed to any of this. And in my world, I just feel it's part of my calling. I feel like a need. And I've talked to you about it when for me, I just felt a push to start my YouTube channel. I thought maybe it's silly. Maybe it'll help one person. I did an ayahuasca ceremony, you know, like a couple days after I had put out my first couple videos and it was just like a giant like yes you are doing the right thing you are putting this droplet of energy out there for others to pick up on it it will make a difference it will help and I just feel that even though sometimes it can be hard on me like when I 
went into the recent back into separation with my twin. I didn't take clients. I didn't want to talk about it for a while with people because it was just too much. I didn't put up videos. If you look at my videos, there's long periods of time where I didn't put up anything because I just wanted to pull away from the whole thing and forget about it and find a different guy and move on with my life and just be done with the whole thing. No, um, I'll just go on what you were saying about like you're making a channels, you're pulled. And I told you many times you are a blessing. I am so thankful that uh, you've made your channel and it made me find it because you have helped me tremendously. Like I, again, thank you for everything. I, I, oh. I will say that a million times because I mean it from my bottom of my heart. You are mm -hmm. one amazing person. Oh, thank you, Will. I always feel like with you, I just feel like I'm like, and it's not in an egotistical way of like, oh, I, I'm the all knowing and I need to like teach you, but something makes me want, it's like a soul purpose, like a soul push, like Talisha, get this information to him, please. You know, <laughs> <laughs> And I appreciate that because uh, there are many times where I was on my knees crying and you were right there for me and Aww. you helped push me. You helped you. You're, you're the helping hand that got me back on my feet. So I I'm always that. so thankful. And same with me, Will, there's been times when you've been there for me, someone to talk to and just someone in a way, you know, even though we bicker about it, yes, you have helped to, I feel that in my journey um, with the karmic I ended up with and then with getting to know you, I had to come into my masculine energy more. And the masculine energy is the lower chakras. It is the logical one that says, do you know what? This is not working. You can't keep kicking a dead horse or you can't, you know, like. <laughs> I know because I remember I would get on you so bad. I'm like, just delete yeah. his pictures, delete his text messages, burn yes, everything. You are I was the one going from delete. the Buddha, the Buddha side. <laughs> I was like, because like, you know, in, in the Buddha religion, they, when you want to get over somebody, you, um, you, you burn everything, you just get rid yeah. of it. And that's what I was like, I do it. I literally had from the start, every single like text message. I had never deleted my text conversations with my twin. I had had it all. And Will would tell me, Talisha, please, you like, just do this, like for yourself, delete it all. And I'd be like, okay. Oh, it took me like days and I finally deleted it. And I did feel like, oh, like a fresh, clear energy or exactly even just right now, it helps me to. Yeah, it's true that we feminine, we have to be more logical about it. Like, OK, do you know what? Maybe this isn't going to work out in this lifetime. Like even with you, maybe you'll be happy to stay with your wife the rest of your life and just hold this as a special love that was true to your heart and she needs to go find her way. You know, that is the reality of it. And I do understand what you're saying in that sense. I'm going to add one more point to this before I move on. Sure. Um, I did delete every text message. I did delete every picture. I did all, but it, it didn't help. It really didn't. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Either. so my second bullet 